guys, 10 ways to improve or increase your training intensity. Now training intensity is something that a lot of people lack when they get to the gym. So hopefully these are gonna be able to help you. One in itself is effort. Now I've put out many different social media posts, articles over the years. Effort really comes from within. Effort has to be something that's self-generated. And when you get underneath the machine, you've got to ask yourself, am I working hard enough? Am I pushing myself hard enough? Because unless you go into the gym without, or unless you go into the gym with effort, you're not going to make half of the progress or get half of the benefit from any of the things I'm gonna talk about now. Effort can be made, measured simply with so many different ways, but the number one thing is wanting the exercise. So one of the ways that that comes with is execution of an exercise. Trying to not move away from how an exercise is supposed to be formed. Because when it comes to intensity, the minute an exercise get hard, gets hard, people limit the range of movement, they move their hips, they move their shoulders to so try and make the exercise easy. You have to make sure from an exercise, an execution perspective, and this goes down to all the videos that I put out on YouTube, is performing the exercise right every single time, right down to the point where you nearly fail. Because it's at that point that you're using the maximum amount of muscle, and the maximum amount of muscle that you're using, whilst it's gonna be very, very hard, gives you the greatest opportunity to grow. And then, we can then start to add in things that make the exercises harder. But until you execute the exercises perfectly, you can't get stronger. You can't challenge as many muscle fibers as possible. Then we move into bar speed. Now bar speed is, is anything from a lat pull down to a bench press to a pushing the foot placement pad on the uh, leg press or the hack squat. It's about the speed in which the load moves. And an intensity technique is literally having the intent to move the bar as quickly as you can. Now, the problem is, if you're not executing the exercise right, one, you have the greater opportunity of injuring yourself. Two, you have the greater opportunity of not using the intended muscle at its fullest. So you can only really bring in an intensity technique such as moving the load as quickly as you can once you're in control of the muscle. So then we have training frequency. So training more regularly because there is no point training more regularly if you're not putting the effort in. There's no point training more intensity, training intensity if the execution of the exercises isn't right. But if it is, you're gonna get a lot more out of your workouts if you train more frequently, especially if you train independent body parts more frequently. Then we've got a training partner. Now many people don't use a training partner, and, and I haven't over the years, but at certain points when I want to raise my training intensity, I bring in a training partner, I work with somebody, or frequently I'll bring in, um, or jump in in some sets with people when I really want to go all out. Sometimes, I'll, very rarely will I actually train with a training partner the whole workout, but there are times when I say, right, I want to go, and I'll bring somebody into spot to push me, and I'll tell them what I need from the set, and that as a training intensity technique takes you training to the complete another level. The one thing with training partners and getting people to push you through reps and sets, it is not easy. And I don't avoid them because um, of the fact that I don't like to train hard, I do. It's just the nature of when I train, where I'm at, and, and, and how my life really fits in. So a few of those really, really make a big difference. Then, especially either when you're wanting to lean up or you want to make the workout a little bit harder, you can bring in intensity techniques such as density. Now density basically means that you're doing more work in the same amount of time. And to do that very effectively, you can bring in things like supersets, which is working two exercises back to back. Now it could be opposing body parts, say quads and back, hamstrings and chest, something like that. Um, but invariably, nine, nine times out of ten when it comes to bodybuilding, it will be uh, opposing upper body or lower body parts. So if you have chest into back or quads into hamstrings, they work very, very well. But you have minimum and minimal rest, and then you work backwards and forwards. So you can get a lot more work done by going backwards and forwards. Add into that things like triceps and giant sets where you're working three of the same muscle group back to back to back. So you could do a row for lower lats, mid lats and upper back as a tricep. You could do quads from a hack squat to a, um, a leg press to a leg extension. And those intensity techniques allow you to do more work in a shorter period of time. 
So that is an intensity technique is very, very difficult. Then you could look at intensity techniques within a workout such as drop sets. Now drop sets are not easy. You basically pick a load, you'll do, let's say we do 10 to 12 repetitions and you work as hard as you possibly can. You then drop 15, 20% of the load, depending on your experience level, depends on how much load you need to drop to be able to get six, eight, 10, 12 repetitions out again. Normally I like to get about 75% of the reps out, so if we did 10 to 12, we'll get eight. And then we can drop the weight again by about 25%, 20%, and then go again. And you can do double, triple, or even quadruple drop sets, which is a fantastic way of taking a muscle to complete and not a failure, which is an intensity technique, like I said. Then you have things such as extending a set. Now, extending a set is a great way to fatigue a muscle. So let's say, for example, you're going to do a preacher curl here, and you're working the preacher curl in that position there, and then you can bring it by your side, and then you can extend it by doing an incline curl. So throughout the whole range of the strength curve, you can actually, uh, a point at which a muscle uh, is strongest or weakest through a range of movement. So you can utilize exercises by extending a set. Now the other way you can extend a set is simply by doing the full range to fatigue the fibers at the top, and then you can extend the set by working the fibers in the middle, and then extend the set by simply working the fibers at the bottom. Works very well for the leg extension, the leg curl, works very, very well for back, because then you can focus on the stretch of the back, you can focus on the short position of the lats, and then finish at the top here, so you can really work at extending and fatiguing the whole range of muscle fibers. So when you look at those techniques that you're putting together, it really, really kind of highlights to you the fact that bringing in these 10 techniques can make a huge difference to how hard you train, how hard you can actually, uh, what you can actually get out of your training. And then guys, do never, ever, ever forget lifting more load. Because everybody tries to put in all these intensified techniques, but one thing that that's remains the same, their main lifts in many cases don't improve. So if you're bringing in drop sets, rest pulls, and you're bringing in triceps, giant sets, supersets, because you want your workout to be a lot more fun, but your loads are not increasing, then you're missing out on a very, very big opportunity to develop denser, develop bigger muscles. So put all these 10 together, don't miss any of them out, especially lifting more load, especially exercise execution, and guys, effort, want it, and take it onto the gym floor, execute it, and you'll make huge amounts of progress.